This is a presentation for the Winnipeg Philatelic Society, Western Canada's oldest stamp club, and it's based on my visit to the National Postal Museum in Washington, D.C. in May of 2015. Now the museum is north of the capital and beside the railway station. There's a picture of the entrance. And it is free, as are all Smithsonian museums in Washington. Most museums are free. And it is a Smithsonian museum. And it's, late at, it's located at 2 Massachusetts Avenue Northeast. And if you develop a tremendous thirst while visiting the museum, you can uh, visit the Dubliner or Kelly's Irish Pub across the street. Here is the entrance. It's a rather beautiful old building, as you can see. This is the entrance to the stamp exhibits, and they start with a picture of the 1840 Queen Victoria Penny Black, and move on to pictures of the first two U.S. stamps issued in 1847. Now there are a series of non-stamp exhibits. There's Oni the Postal Dog, and Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. This is a statue of Oni the Postal Dog, and he got his own stamp in 2011. There's an interesting story if you want to look up Oni the Postal Dog. And there is a large area of exhibits, Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. That's a mail sorting train. I was intending to spend my time looking at the stamp exhibits so I moved on to that area. And there are basically four areas. There's the other than USA area, has a series of pull-out frames. Canada, for instance, is represented by the Blue Nose stamp. The United Kingdom is represented by a one-pound seahorse. Then there's the USA area of pull-out frames and gems that are on display and exhibits if you go specifically looking for them. You do rather need to prepare for this because there are so many stamps and they're not necessarily on display. So if there's something you want to see, you kind of need to be prepared and then go look for and find the thing you're looking for. And so here are the pull-out frames by country and you can see them there. They're kind of silvery. So you can see why there's so many stamps in a relatively small area. If you pull them out, this is what they look like. Here's a selection of stamps and covers. Some more covers. Here is North America, and Canada is represented by the Blue Nose stamp. You can kind of see it there on the far left. Great Britain is represented by the One Pound Seahorse. There it is. You can see each country might have only one stamp to represent it. The U.S. stamp exhibits are extensive. Now again, this is a big room and the exhibits are in these pull-out frames along the wall and there is a overwhelming amount of philatelic material. So that's why I say you kind of need to prepare because if you just kind of randomly pull out frames you might miss the interesting stuff. And there's the other side of the room. So there's an awful lot of stuff. What I call the gems. Here is a Washington 10 cent second day of use cover. I thought that was kind of interesting. Um, a stamp from Hawaii with missionaries and a three cent Washington on the cover. Two and five cent missionaries. The stamp exhibits looking in the frames and if you know what you're looking for, you'll go find it. So what I was particularly looking for was the Franklin Zed Grill. There are only two of them. One is the property of the New York Public Library, and this is it. This is where it's now displayed. So if you pulled out the right frame, you would find the Franklin Zed Grill, of which there are only two. And there's a picture. There are other stamp exhibits. This is a Jenny Invert block that was the property of Bill Gross and it was on loan. World famous inverted Curtis Jenny. That is not the block that was in the famous trade and from Wikipedia these are the images 
of the famous trade. The Franklin Z grill was traded for an inverted Jenny block. And the details of that swap are Bill Sundman from the Mystic Stamp Company bought the Z grill in 1998 for just under a million bucks. And in 2005, he swaps the Jenny Bach block with Bill Gross, which Bill Gross had purchased for just under $3 million. And Bill Gross now has a complete U.S. collection, one of every catalog stamp. And in 2014, Sundman sold the Jenny block for somewhere in the neighborhood of $5 million. Bill Gross, you've seen him mentioned before, is a collector and founder of PIMCO, an investment company, and he donated $10 million to the National Postal Museum. Going back to the stamp exhibits, as you pull the frames out, there are just too many to uh, imagine. This is, you have to look kind of closely, but trust me, they have got two five-cent stamps in the middle of this block. Uh, the middle two stamps in the block are five cent, and the rest of the stamps around it are two cent. If you had bought that sheet and broken it up, you never would have known, but because that piece is still intact, you can tell the error. It was an engraving error. Now on TripAdvisor, it is number 48 of 470 things to do in Washington. That's uh, kind of amazing, I think, because I don't know if stamp collecting is that popular, but it was a very good museum and I almost didn't have enough time there. You finally have to go. There's so much stuff. There's the website. So I would suggest before you go, you spend some time on the website planning what it is that you want to see in your visit. So thanks for listening.